Hi, so the graphene methods that we've been looking at have been uh, chemically based and they use um, pretty strong acids. Uh, and a lot of people have written to me asking, is there a greener method of doing this? And the answer is quite simply, yes, there is. Uh, and one of the reasons I haven't shown this green method is because in order to do it, you can't actually use powder. Um, you need some of this stuff. Uh, and this is a uh, lump of graphite that was sent to me by um, graphite.com, RS International. Their, um, their address is in the description bar beneath, uh, and they, they charge a good price, a uh, reasonable price for this stuff. Uh, and this is a lump of block graphite, and, and you need this in order to be able to do the next bit. Now, the next bit is an electrochemical method, and um, you need to saw out a, a piece of this to make an electrode. And the um, size of the electrode you're going to make is um, one and a half centimetres um, wide by two, two and a half centimetres high. You attach that and you make sure that what you dip into the electrolyte is one and a half centimetres by one and a half centimetres. Uh, and that's what you need to be able to make out of that. Now, that's a beautiful bit of um, graphite and um, I think that's 99.9% .9 pure. So the purity is going to have an effect, obviously, the purer that you get, the better. Um, you're just going to get better results from it. So you need a lump of um, graphite like that, or a small lump of graphite, in order to do the electrochem electrochemical method. <coughs> this um, whiteboard, incidentally, was uh, suggested to me by Stefan from over Unity. He said that it's... Um, much easier to understand, and, and I have to agree, it's much easier to, to um, show anyway. I hope it's much easier to understand, but thanks, Stefan, for that. It's, it's going quite well, and I think it's going to become a bit of a feature. But anyway, to, to set this up, what you need is an electrochemical cell. An electrochemical cell really is quite a simple thing. It's just a container, and in that container we have some liquid. That liquid is an ionic liquid, that is, it will conduct a current. Uh, and this particular uh, one is made up from um, 100 millilitres of water, 2.4 grams of concentrated sulfuric acid, and the concentration is 98%. And um, that would make your base solution, uh, and the uh, experiment would work with this, but there's a problem with it in that it'll be um, quite thick, the, the, the graphene that you flake off using this method, if you use just this solution, would be quite thick. You need to modify it a little bit, and the way you modify it is by adding um, 11 millilitres of a 30% sodium hydroxide. So it's a 9 to 1 ratio of um, the hydroxide to the acid. 30% uh, is by volume, uh, by weight. So to 100 grams of water, you've had 30 grams of sodium hydroxide and you're going to get your 30% solution. Uh, 100 grams of water is going to be 100 millilitres. Take off 11 millimetres, add it to your solution, and you're there. Okay? Now, into this, what you need to do is to pop your lump graphite electrode in there. Now, that lump graphite, remember, is... 1.5 by 1.5. That section is 1.5 by 1.5. That can be whatever you like it to be. But you've got to make sure that that section is that size. Then what you do is connect that to a battery and put another electrode in the other side. Now they use platinum for this uh, and obviously we're not going to use platinum, we're going to use copper. So you make a copper electrode on that side, connect it to the battery and what will happen then is the graphite will flake off into the solution and become graphene, but relatively thick again. So you need to do something else. So the first thing that you do is you apply a plus 2.5 volts here first. And you apply that for one minute. So after you put um, this whole thing together, you apply it for one minute and then you ramp that up to plus 10 volts and apply that for two seconds. Then you swap it to minus 10 volts and apply that for five seconds. So you basically have your battery. You pop your wires on one and two, swap them over one and two and three and four and five and swap them over. 
and keep on doing that. Now the length of time you do that for will depend on how much graphene you want. Because once you start doing that swap over, the plus and minus 10, you'll see the graphene starting to come off as little flakes. And it'll come off into this solution as flakes of graphene and it'll first of all cover the surface. Now as it covers the surface, once it reaches that electrode, it'll short out. So what you need is a little bit of something there as a barrier to stop that happening. Anything will do, uh, a bit of paper, a, a bit of fibreglass, just something that will allow the conduction but prevent the graphene. So something kind of filter there will help that happen and it'll stop it shorting out. And you just keep swapping it on your plus and minus 10 seconds until you think you've got enough. And it takes about 10 minutes. After about 10 minutes you're going to have plenty of this stuff. So that's the basic setup for it. Now, it's a very basic setup and there's very little control that we have over that. What they do to actually control it is um, you have your electrode with, sorry, you have your cell and you have two electrodes and what they do is pop another electrode in and that electrode is called the reference electrode. You connect that to a potentiostat and you can control the applied voltages to the actual working electrodes relatively easily. We can't do that because we don't have a potentiostat and it's um, a relatively expensive piece of equipment anyway. So what we can do to um, control the voltages better is um, the system that I showed you, that is with the 1.5 by the 1.5, with its tel uh, 10 volts supplied to it, is going to have um, a certain amount of current flowing through it. And you can calculate that current. So if you set up your cell and you measure the resistance across there, and uh, apply 10 volts to it, then using Ohm's law, and I'm sure you remember your Ohm's law, V equals IR. So using your Ohm's law for a DC circuit where you've got a fixed voltage, you have a known resistance, you can actually work out the current. And it's the current that you want. Now that current is being passed across this area this area is 1.5 by 1.5, so the area is 2.25. So whatever that current is, if you divide it by 2.25, what you're going to get is what's called the current density. And that will give you the current density, the amount of current that's flowing over there per centimetre. And that's the figure that you're actually after when doing this calculation. So once you have the current density, that's going to be a fixed figure for you. That's the current that you're going to want to put into it, whatever, however you modify this cell. So if you make your electrodes bigger, then you're going to need to um, alter one of these things to make sure that the uh, current density remains constant. Okay, so you can play around with that to make sure that you get the same current density at the electrode, depending on how you alter the electrode size. Or equally, if you alter the voltage here, then what you're going to have to do is insert more resistance to keep that current density constant. Okay, so that's enough talking about it. What I now need to do is go off and sort some um, graphite into an electrode or two. So I'll do that. Okay, so here's the cell setup, and on this side I've got a copper wire and I've wrapped a bit of fiberglass around it to form the barrier that we're talking about. And on this side I've got my um, graphite electrode that I've attached to a bit of Meccano, as it happens. I made the graphite electrode by um, splintering off a piece of that graphite lump that you saw with a, a chisel. And then sawing it roughly to size, filing it down to finish it, and then drill a 4mm hole through it. And that is what I've actually bolted on here. Now, there's my electrolyte sitting here that I've made up according to the proportions that we um, talked about. There is quite broad range um, here, so you don't really need to be that exact. And at the end of the day, I actually adjusted it and just used um, ordinary battery acid. The ordinary battery acid is 35%, so basically three times as much will give you the same as her, a 98%. Um, so instead of using 2.4 grams of 98%, 2.4 grams of 
EVU 7.2 grams of 35%, you're just pretty much about there. You need to um, add the alkali, incidentally, so that you adjust the pH to around about 1.2. So if you're using a test paper, somewhere between 1 and 2 is where you need to get it. Okay, all of this stuff, incidentally, I forgot to mention, is um, in my book, Graphene 101. Again, the uh, address for that is actually down in the description if you want to pick up a copy. So the cell's now ready to actually go, and that's the next thing we're going to do. So I've poured the electrolyte in and measured the resistance of that, and the resistance of that is about uh, 20k, something around about there. Now, you can work out from that that if that resistance is 20k and you're applying 10 volts, what current would actually be applied? Now, using that information and V equals IR, we can use these batteries. Now, I've got two 6 volt batteries here connected up to give me 12 volts and two 1.5 volt batteries here to give me 3 volts. Actually these batteries are quite new and that's outputting about 15 volts and that's outputting about um, 3.5 volts. So in order to bring those down to the correct voltage what I need to do is put a resistor in between um, the anode, sorry, the, the electrode here and the battery supply to bring that resistance up and that will alter the amount of current that's flowing there given this voltage. Now, um, because I'm only demonstrating this, I'm not going to actually do that, but that's what you would do to bring it under control. Now, these two small batteries here with their resistance in, the white lead is the positive, the yellow lead is the negative, and all you do is connect them up, We go and just let that sit there for a minute. Now, I'm not going to do that at this time, but that's what you do. So, connect that to the positive, that to the negative, leave it for a minute. Then, what you do <coughs> connect to your positive and negative, and the first one just touch them against each other and one and two, swap them around, and one and two and three and four and five. And I don't know if you could see the fizzing there, so I'll do that again so that you can see that fizzing. So it's positive to here, pos and negative to the copper, one and two, and then we swap it around so that we've got negative now to the um, graphite and positive to the copper and we do that for five and watch the fizzing one and two and three and four and five and did you see it fizzing off then so what we've got there is the graphite being, uh, graphite being lifted off as graphene now you have to do that for about 10 minutes so i'm going to do that for 10 minutes and then show you after that so here it is after 10 minutes, and that's all that took, 10 minutes. And we have a nice film there of um, graphene, and that goes down for about half a centimetre or so. Uh, and I can't think of a, a safer, easier way. Now, that uh, mixture in there was a very weak solution of sulfuric acid. I mean, 2.4 grams in 100 millilitres is, is absolutely nothing, so it's an extremely weak solution. Now, that was a very basic experiment, really, just to, to show you the process, and there are some really um, easy and obvious ways of improving that. Um, I spent ten minutes <laughs> swapping the cables over, and that was incredibly dull. Um, what would be easier if you um, just wired up a relay, and you wired that up on, say, a 555 five, five timer, so that it had two seconds one way, five seconds the other way, uh, and that's a relatively simple task to do. So you could wire up a relay, just turn it on, and leave it to stew. Uh, and that's obviously a vast improvement to sitting there swapping around with your hand, which is really tedious. Um, the other thing is I used um, sodium hydroxide, and sodium hydroxide did the job, and did the job reasonably well, but um, potassium hydroxide would do um, the job an awful lot better. And the other thing to bear in mind is that it's actually incredibly sensitive to um, voltage variation. So anything less than 10 volts, say 8 volts, then the reaction is going to be so slow it's going to take forever. Anything above 10 volts, say 12 or 15 volts, then what it does is peels off the sheets too thickly. 
So you really need to maintain it at 10 volts as well as you can to get the best possible result. So clearly some kind of um, stabilised voltage supply would be ideal here rather than a couple of batteries clipped together. Again, I only clipped a couple of batteries together just to show you the basic experiment. So um, improvements would be uh, better materials in the solution, uh, voltage control, some kind of switching control so you don't have to switch it by hand and then you're going to be able to produce um, what is essentially a green um, graphene from um, materials lying around actually relatively easily and relatively quickly. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching.